So when I opened this place in 2008, I was Mike Cashin. I took my mother's maiden name. I'm now Mike Conti. Some people call me Pugsley. I'll answer to it. I own Pugsley's Barbershop in Kingston, New York. Opened in 2008. Pugsley Sideshow Barbershop in Kingston, New York. Opened in 2016. And soon, Pugsley's Barbershop, Hudson, New York, 2020. Barbering spoke to me super young for some reason. I don't have any explanation for that, but uh, I, I literally called my mother in the middle of a service one time because we got talking about this thing and asked her when she bought me my first cheapy home clipper setup. And she told me I was eight years old. Uh, and I used to tell her I wanted to cut hair back then. I grew, you know, I was, me and a couple others were the, the ones that sort of did the garage cuts or the bathroom cuts, you know, early on. And it was that for a long time until I came to a point where I sort of needed to figure something out. And uh, this was that. Real, real quick summed up timeline. Little kid, like cutting hair. Why? I have no idea. Cut my friends and my, and my own hair for a really long time. High school, up past high school. Uh, got into more rad haircuts, went and saw Steve. Steve gave me my first, I'm, my standards changed over the years, I'm sure, and I don't know how it was technically, but it was proportionate, it was awesome. It was like a haircut I'd never got. It wasn't just clippers to the sky and he put a razor on my neck. So now I'm a barber nerd, now I have a new idea of what a proper looking haircut looks like, and then I'm at this car show down in Brooklyn and that's where I meet Rob from Rob's Shop Shop. And he's got this thing set up, he flies in, he sets up a booth and he's cutting hair outside under the BQE and I'm standing there with my girlfriend and I'm like, I'm gonna go to barber school. I'm gonna go to barber school and when I get done, I'm gonna open up a barber shop uptown. Uh, so I grew up right uptown here and um, my family had a small business for three generations before me uh, and it was in the Bronx. So my idea of, of small business was street, sidewalk, storefront. That's what it looked like to me. It wasn't like a mall, it wasn't a strip mall. It wasn't, that, that's what it looked like to me. Uh, and even as a kid, I had an idea that I wanted to have a store, you know? We had a skate shop around the corner, a guy, Jed Sherman, owns Liquid in New Paltz now. Uh, he had a skate shop around the, around the corner. I used to pretend I had a skate shop in my basement when I was a kid, like, you know, I kind of always had this small business direction and, and that day it clicked for me and I did it. While I was in barber school, I was at that point getting my hair cut by some of the older guys in town and hearing some of this stuff and, Steve, right over from Albany Avenue, uh, told me one day that he survived the 60s as a barber. And I mean, he said it with such a, you know, and that, that stuck with me always. He also told me that I was going to a terrible program and I was never gonna become a barber and, uh, you know, so on and so forth. And just all this proud old guy stuff. Yeah, when I first started barber school, um, again, I had, this, I had this moment where I had a straight razor on my neck for the first time. So that was, that was it, new standard, that's barbering, right? So this is, this is, I guess, where I get this from that I wanna hand off to other people, to my clients. Um, so when I went to barber school, I remember talking to my wife, talking about, is it gonna be straight razor? We have to straight razor, right? They're gonna teach us a straight razor. Lo and behold, I got there and there was a straight razor in my starter kit. Uh, and obviously I found out very quickly that uh, hot towel shave is still standard on the New York State Board Practical Exam and that not only uh, did I want to learn, but I had to learn to get my license, which was awesome. Cutting hair for me means so many things on so many levels. And I've been fortunate enough to find something that I enjoy doing, and I get to do it every day. And I get to make a living doing that. And I don't think I wake up any weekday morning and not consider that and consider it through my day like it's pretty special. And the older I get, I think the more I appreciate it. That, that, that's, not, that's not wearing off. If anything, it's growing stronger, you know? Especially, you know, being a father now and, and getting older and sort of just getting to a point where I really appreciate the value of time to spend my time participating out there and paying bills and whatever I gotta do out there. It's, it's very special to do that here. I think there's a lot of people my age, maybe a little older, maybe some a little younger, whatever, but in the general, that, that are the generation that are doing this, that are growing this trade. And a lot of us came up in and around the same time period. So a lot of us have so many of the same interests, like, you know, incorporating now social media, there's obviously a major percentage of the growth of this industry that can be blamed solely on social media. And, and a lot of relationships that I've made. Uh, so thank goodness for that. 
But then finding people that were just like, God, that guy's a lot like me, <laughs> you know? And, oh man, he like, you know, uh, and it's it's crazy. And, and just like I've been able, or I've sort of been forced to cross paths with people that I may not have otherwise, the same goes for the clientele, from chair to chair, from waiting area to chair, from waiting area to waiting area, like, yeah, people that run into each other and, and relationships being established. And I would like to think that whether you're here and you're here or over there, that here we can find some sort of commonality and and that's how it works a lot of the time. And I appreciate that, it's a pretty special thing. The connections, um, I would consider myself a people person. I've met such an incredible amount of people and, and so many different kinds of people. And these rooms have, have, have put me in, in touch and you know with so many people that I may not have other, otherwise ever crossed paths with. And then just the craft itself. I enjoy putting my best on people. I appreciate sort of stepping somebody's standards up or in a different direction. People who've never taken the time or, or maybe been educated to try a specialty place. And you know, I mean, this industry went into, into such, a, such a place of machinery for a long time, you know, and it was in and out and the craft sort of got lost. And, and uh, what's happening now is that we're appreciating that again. And craftsmen are appreciating it. You know, the people doing it are appreciating it. And a lot of people are getting services at levels that maybe they haven't gotten before or even knew they should have been expecting, you know? And, and being able to hand that off to somebody is a pretty special thing. I think our clientele is very loyal. It's interesting, the battle between um, wanting to be out there and see new faces and welcome new people into the shop and have that opportunity to give them their first hot towel shave, the first time they've ever had a razor on the back of their neck is a standard standard issue for a regular haircut. Like that's all really awesome. Uh, at the same time, the importance of clientele retention. You know, so, uh, I, well, I guess, I guess the answer is that we've been able to grow. Clientele has changed and style has changed. And yeah, our clientele is all over the board. You know, so a comfortable place. A place that's comfortable for everybody. A place where anyone can feel at home and hopefully reap those same benefits of just having some time off to relax. I mean, when do we honestly get to truly get rid of our phones and truly, you can't answer your phone during a haircut, you know? So congratulations, leave it in the pocket of your jacket, whatever, um, for anybody to have that opportunity to relax and take that in and listen to the banter in the back or catch something interesting or hear a new song or, have a whiskey with your haircut. I, I've, I've always had some sort of bottle in this room to share with my friends. Uh, that was, it just seemed like it made sense. Maybe Friday after work, I wanna do a little, you know, like it's here. It's here, it's, it's my place, it's honest, and it's here for that reason. We're not handing out some fun selection, selection of, you know, libations while you wait. The beer's here because welcome to my home. Need a beer? You know, <laughs> you might be here a minute. It's just, it's all just function. It's all honest stuff. When people come in and I get a chance to look at their hair, look how they kind of style it or don't style it, equally important, and kind of figure out what's gonna work for them. And then listen to what they have to say to me. I sort of, in the past couple of years, have found myself saying a lot uh, that as a barber, we have the obligation to speak client but a client doesn't have an obligation to speak barber. So we gotta sort that out a little bit, right? And someone sits in your chair and they ask for something and you sometimes I find myself, I used to have more, I don't know if more conversation is fair because I think, I, I think I'm pretty, I'm pretty into taking time with consultation and making sure people get what they want. Um, but there's certain things sometimes where I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll go ahead and do what I think is right. And, show somebody their hair and they're oh, perfect. That's exactly what I, that's exactly what I wanted. It's cool. It's not exactly what you said, but that's okay. Cause that's my job. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think I find it easier and easier the longer I'm in this to sort of see where somebody's coming from based on their hair a little bit. And that could be, that could be mean so many different things, you know, what their interests are, but you're looking at someone's hair and also their shoes. I got pretty heavy, I got pretty nerdy with it um, right out of the gate. 
and decided that this wasn't something a lot. I think a lot of people probably learn the procedure to pass the state board to then not really find a place for it in their career. And that's okay. That doesn't mean you're wrong. Uh, but I wanted to. I wanted to do hot towel shaves and I wanted that to be part of the traditional shop. Uh, so that's the ultimate slowdown, right? Talking about the barbershop and forcing you to sort of slow down and relax and enjoy yourself. Like, then you absolutely cannot answer your phone. That's like, that's like borderline, not even an emergency. Um, but again, something that I've done to the majority of people uh, who get them for the first time, and maybe second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, but the first time they get it is generally with me, uh, for the most part. Unless occasionally you run into somebody who just loves to get hot towel shades, and that's definitely a thing too. Um, so yeah, here's here's a, another time that I get to introduce somebody to something, set their standards, and that's kind of as scary as somebody who's had a million hot towel shaves. You know, this is this is your this is somebody's first uh, impression. So. Yeah, I want them to chase that. But uh, but no, it's a it's a pretty heavy it's a heavy procedure, and it's gotten heavier as I've gotten into it. It's been it's been the same for a long time now. But generally, if you're starting off with a beard, we'll take you all down, and we'll lay you back. We'll do a towel, we'll do a hot lather, we'll do another towel. At that point, I'll usually do like a pre-shave oil, and then more hot lather, and then we'll shave. Um, depending on the coarseness of the beard, you gotta adjust a little bit. Sometimes we'll throw in an extra hot towel. Sometimes we'll do another hot towel, fresh blade, and another shave in between. Um, but again, I mean, we're, we're snowflakes, right? You got different hair versus different skin and the millions of those combinations. So it depends, that whole process depends on. But we'll heat you back up, open you all back up again. We do an exfoliation, full facial massage. And then uh, we seal you all back up with a cold towel. Close everything back up. And then you need your astringent. We've always used a, uh, a traditional bay rum aftershave. And uh, slap you around a little bit and you're good to go. There's gotta be love there because it's not a necessity anymore. You know? Um, I mean, I think, I think any more primitive than a straight razor is a sharp piece of bluestone. You know, I mean, it's, it's, there was a time maybe people people weren't in a position to be able to do it themselves, you know? Some other time in some other world, um, somebody who can afford to have it done um, whenever they need it, you know? Daily, I'm sure, people would have done it, you know, whatever. Either way, it's not, no longer a necessity and I think, it's, I think it's tough to even compare it to modern technology anyway, you know? I can't tell you that on every face, depending again on skin, that I can get as close, close as I could with a, a Mach 29 or whatever they got now. Um, so that's that's what you got. You got you got love, you know. You got you got a. It's it's absolutely not a necessity. It's purely a hot towel shave is a luxury, right? It's not a necessity. So if you're gonna do it, you're doing something nice for yourself. So you got to put love into it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a super nerd. <laughs> I'm a super barber nerd.